Welcome to the first episode with Beers with Peers. I'm your host, Sandia. This is our guest today. He goes by 98 Views. His real name is Edwin. He's a photographer slash streamer. Welcome to the show, Edwin. How are you feeling today? So good, full, tired, heat. A shit ton of Burger King right before this. Mistake on his part. And drink coffee, so we'll see how this goes. And so now I'm drinking alcohol. Do you like beer? I hate beer. Beer is disgusting. Well, we'll see how the show goes. The premise for the show, obviously, is we're gonna go through three random beers. We don't know what they are at all. Our guy behind the scenes pours us these beers. Um, they can be different types, whether IPA, st ale, stouts, sours, etc. So we just gotta try it, and if we don't like it, we just gotta finish it. So let's get going. Cheers, mate. Cheers. This is a. Um... That's not bad. It's, it's a, not bad. It's at an all. ale. I'm predicting it's an ale. It's right an now. ale. It's definitely an ale. I've only had an ale like twice because of him, but I can tell it's an ale. All right. So you are a photographer and a streamer. Yeah. Really weird combination, but you are both. <laughs> I like to uh, dabble in a little bit of everything that interests me. So what <laughs> what sparked the streamer phase? Because when I met you, you were uh, strictly a photographer. Uh, I, think I met you. Actually, I met you at a shoot. We were doing a, a photo shoot. And I was actually the model, I think. It was from some like horror thing for college that for one of our friends. Oh yeah. And yeah, we, you, you were the photographer. That's how I met you. So what got you into streaming? Because now you are streaming often. I see you quite often actually doing it and you're more adamant about that than actually photography now. So what, what's, the, what's going on? Well, uh, so I did a lot of photography, but when COVID hit, I stopped obviously, you know, because the world shut down. So I stopped shooting and I started playing a lot, but then I was like, I don't really feel productive, you know, just playing video games for nothing. So I was like, might as well stream it, you know, like I play them anyways, so might as well just have it recording live and see what happens. And I kind of started liking it. I started getting views, not a lot, obviously, like little, little bit, but it's cool to like have yeah, conversations. Viewers, man. It's cool to, it's cool to have uh, conversations while you're playing. So there you go. That's, that's honestly what do you why. play? I started out playing. I want the. The reason why I started streaming was because I wanted to stream horror games because I, I like playing scary games with friends and I thought it would be like funny to like catch our reactions playing them. But um, I haven't played horror games in a while so I just play like Apex, Apex Legends. And what's the scariest horror game you've played? Uh, the scariest horror game I played was definitely this game called uh, Light, no, what was it called? Uh, I honestly forgot the title of the game, but it was it was it was pretty scary. Like you're literally the whole premise of the game is you're in a room. And all Bro, she, is she staring at you? Wait, there's someone behind her. Or is that the same? Oh no, it's her, it's her shadow. <laughs> yeah, she's staring at me. Come on, bitch. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> the hallway in a room. That's it. My like, majority of the game, but you walk back and forth, and it changes every time you walk back and forth through that hallway. So it's just like pop-up like my life. Something yeah, like pop-up scares left and right. It's, so it's pretty good. No, it's not that, it's not that my life though. <laughs> yeah, I was actually watching you play horror games. I just remember you screaming a lot. Yeah, I'm a, a little bitch. A lot of screaming. <laughs> a lot of I like screaming. playing them, but I'm a bitch, so I get scared. Which is why I enjoy it, I guess. So you switch to Apex, less scary. Just more sweaty. Yeah, I'm a try hard on Apex. <laughs> I say I'm not, but I really am. <laughs> I, I gotta catch up. You gotta catch up, man. So Edwin's not a beer drinker at all. I fucking hate beer. He likes tequila. That's his main drink, basically, is tequila. So but um, mixed drinks. I don't take when shots. He said he agreed to this to do this interview. It, he he was like, "Am I gonna drink that much, really?" And I'm like, "Yeah. yeah, you really gonna drink this much? And you might not like the beers, but if you don't drink it, everyone in the world will know. No one in the world will know because only like we'll get like ten views. <laughs> That's okay." <laughs> Maybe we'll start, get 98 views. You gotta start somewhere. <laughs> Got those puns in there. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's finish our beer and move on to the next question. Oh man, I'm scared. I'm so full, hold up, I gotta breathe. <laughs> you guys are gonna edit it, right? Like like cut it if you guys yeah, need to? We'll cut it. So I, might, I might take a while sometimes. <laughs> we'll do a timeline. <laughs> like, my editors in the background just say no. We're just gonna watch, the whole video is just gonna be you trying to finish one beer. Got you guys. Another side story, we had a friend when playing, drink your beer while I'm telling the story. We had a friend while playing his King's Cup, lost the game even though he poured the most beer in the King's Cup and had to drink the whole thing. 
He had so much confidence that he was gonna win that yeah, game. Yeah, he had so much confidence. The worst part was it was just beer. It was nothing. It was just like it was the same beer. It wasn't like mixture. It's just I think it was just Dos Equis, right? Yeah, it was just Dos Equis. No, it, it was, was it was mixed. No, it was just Dos Equis because it Are was. You sure? Yeah, we had a case of it. It was at my old apartment. Yeah, I remember your apartment. And um, he was like gagging on the balcony. Yeah, he was gagging. He's like, <gasps> he was like, a, it was almost like movie theater cups. And his dumb ass like we were drinking, and he decides to like the whole thing and just pours the whole thing in it. And I'm like, why are you doing that? And then like, he's, and then when he got it, we all talk shit to him because he's the one that did it like out of all the people. So shout out to Keith for, um, you know, being that guy. So let's finish these beers, Edwin. <laughs> <laughs> that Jaeger bomb hit on you. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. All right, so we're on our second beer um, for beers of peers, of course. Um, we do not know what this is once again. Um, <clears throat> so are you ready? I'm ready. What is this? It smells really good. Or maybe it's it smells, just- It smells like raspberries. Smells, yeah, it smells like fruit. I'm saying raspberries or cranberry, some shit like that. Some kind of berry. All right, you ready? Cheers, don't spill it. There we go. It's not bad. It's not, the aftertaste is kind of bland afterward. It kind of just like, it's really like fruity at first. It kind of has like a, a wet towel aftertaste. <laughs> yeah, it just goes super like bland, like super bland. It's just like fruity. And then it's like, no. You guys ever smelled like a moist towel that's kind of been sitting out, <laughs> but it's still moist and has like that weird, like mildewy smell. That's what it tastes like. like. When you leave the towel the like, like crumpled, crumpled up in like the kind of like your it. bathroom and you don't pick it up so it doesn't get dry because you're not hanging it. <laughs> and when you do pick it up, it's still a little wet, but it's you know, You know that, that bamboozled game, the jelly beans? Yeah, yeah, it yeah. tastes like the nasty jelly beans, but like in a good way. How is that good? I don't know. I just like it. All right, Edwin, so you are, uh, you were an avid YouTuber for a bit, right? You're making videos on YouTube. Yeah, I plan on coming back soon. And um, I remember one was with your dad, rest in peace your dad, mm -hmm. um, that you were making, your dad was in prison a long time ago and he learned to make prison food. So you made a video and I think you were getting drunk in the video too, which is oh, tequila. <laughs> no, here. I wasn't getting I wasn't getting drunk in that one, but I did get drunk in other videos. Yeah, you did do one. another cooking video. Yeah, you I was sober for that cooking one. Cooking with him. Edwin. Cooking with Edwin. Yeah. I so I remember that you made, was it, it was prison tamales, right? Yes. So how do you make a prison tamale? So when we filmed that video, I literally had no idea how to do it. So a majority of that video was my dad literally taking over and just doing what he did. And I was just kind of there just watching him and doing my skits because in my uh, YouTube, my Kitchen 98, I like to do skits because I like to, there's a bunch of like cooking channels obviously on YouTube. So I was like, I got to add my own little flavor to it. And I love to be funny. That's like my thing, I guess. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm probably not funny at all, but I think I am. So I like to, I like to add, add a, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. funny little skits here and there. But uh, basically what he did was he got a bag of Doritos, he crushed them up and then he added water to it. And then he like, kind of like molded it in the bag until it turned into like a dough or like masa, you know, like the tamales are made out of masa. And then he bought this, um, I guess it's like pre-cooked roast beef at, at the store, but I guess they do sell it in prisons in commissary. And he got that with jalapenos and um, I believe like some type of like hot sauce. And all he did was open up, cut the bag in half, you know, obviously lay out the, the, the Dorito masa flat and then put the meat and fold it like really with, with the garbage bag. All right, so here we go. So what you do, you grab your plastic bag, make sure you get it nice and tight and you roll. And then you help it with your, with your hands. Get it nice and uh, tight in there. That's how it's gonna be start looking. And then he cut it and then he made the malice. Did he were... cook it or like, how did he cook it? He warmed it up in the microwave for like 15 seconds, but it, I thought it was gonna be the grossest thing ever, but I tried it and it was really, really good. Did it really smell? It, it really, like, even, you gotta make it for me one day. I gotta try it. I honestly, I, I can't make it. I, don't know you know I, I forgot already. I just, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to make it like him. But uh, And then he made, I remember you telling me he used to make, he made prison cake before too. We were actually gonna film that, but obviously, you know, he didn't, he wasn't around that, that long for us to do it. But yeah. uh, that one I could probably make you guys, it's literally just Oreo, Oreo cookies. You separate all the Oreo cookies, um, so the cookies and then the cream, you separate them in two different bowls. You crush up the Oreo cookies like really finely, so it's like a powder in a way. Yeah. And you get a Coke bottle and you add Coke to the to the cookie and you just you just mix it until it turns into a like a, a dough or a, what do you call it? 
paste. Like it's like cookie or cake, cake, cake batter, cake batter, cake yeah, batter, yeah, yeah, and then Coke. Yeah, it's literally Jesus. so sugary. It's like Jesus, diabetes, man. and then you add Coke to the cream as well, but not not as much. So it's not a water; it's just Coke. Yeah, literally, and you so mix it, and it turns into like a, the paste, and then you you put the you put the uh, the batter into like a, a Tupperware, and you put that in the microwave for like fifteen minutes, ten minutes, and it literally turns into a cake, and then you put the the mix on top, the cream, and that's it. It's really I didn't like it. It's too sweet. I I hate sweets, so like. It was, I tried it, it was good because it's, you know, prison cakes. I was like, oh, it's pretty cool, but. It's pretty cool. It's too sweet for me. You're like, I'm good. I actually told him, I'm like, because my dad knew how to make a bunch of like prison food. So I was like, if you honestly, like, I feel like in today's generation, everyone's always trying to like get on like the hype train for like the new foodies or whatever. I was like, if you make like a business selling prison food, you probably like, make a bet. you could probably get some money off yeah, of you that. You a food stand and just says prison food. <laughs> I feel like honestly, you can make some money off of that because it's like, because I've seen it. There's a YouTuber, actually, I don't know his name. But I was, you, you know, the rabbit holes you find. Mm -hmm. where he just makes prison food and i was just watching and i'm like this dude is really sitting here just making a shit ton of prison food and he's just there he's like this is what we do in prison and i'm like he's just this like big like buff white guy that looks i like think he, i've seen that, him he looks like he was in prison he talks about like prison rules and, and stuff like, yeah, too i think i've seen his youtube this. yeah and i'm just shout out like, to that guy <laughs> shout out to the prison guy <laughs> But uh, yeah, I do plan on coming back with some more videos pretty soon. Um, yeah, your videos are actually really good. I don't know why you stopped making the videos. Honestly, because COVID, obviously, and because I ran out of ideas to like make food, like I don't know what to make anymore. Uh, but I do plan on like bringing Kitchen 98 back, but more of like a vlogging style where I do like food challenges. So I actually want to do a challenge. Have you guys, you, I'm pretty sure you guys, all you guys are all stoners. So you guys seen Harold and Kumar, White yeah, Castle? Yeah, yeah. We do not smoke weed. Yeah. <laughs> but Harold and Kumar White Castle, you guys seen it, right? Yeah, of course. You know the ending of the movie when they go to White Castle and they yeah. order like that big meal? I want to order that and like have a friend. You ever have White Castle? Yeah, it's disgusting. I had it in, Va you know I had it in Vegas. I had it in Vegas too. It's actually really good. I fucking enjoy it. I enjoy it. I, I was, you know when you're drunk and you eat food and you like it because you're drunk? I had it drunk and I hated it still. Wait, so. was that your first time in Vegas recently? I've been to Vegas twice. One time with, you weren't there. It was with Juan and Santiago. I and I think Santiago. David, David was there too. <laughs> I am Santiago. You mean Sal? Sal. That's oh, yeah, you guys went to Vegas for a random road trip, and you guys were there for like that was two the hours. worst. That was the worst decision of my. And you guys just drove through it, and then you guys just like left. We were like, it's because I was literally in bed, bored, and Juan said, "Let's go to Vegas. Fuck it." What and then the I was like, "Ooh, we spontaneous." I don't think I was, but we went and so then like but, halfway, so we weren't even there yet. We were like halfway there and I regretted it already. <laughs> I was just like, why did I come here? So tired now? you just recently turned, you, when you turned 20, like. You, well, I'm 23 now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you just went for the first time after being 21, right? Yeah, and I got, I didn't get fucked up, but. So I went to Vegas. It was fun. I went to Vegas recently during COVID for work. Vegas sucks though. And I fucking hated it. It smells like a giant cigarette. There's yeah. so much weird shit in Vegas. That you're just like they don't tell you that when you get there like oh it's fun you know you get a drink you get a gamble when you get there you realize how dirty it is and how much it smells so here's the thing when we went to vegas i went with a lot of people yeah but i hated the strip dude the strip is fucking horrible dude. majority of the fun i had was in the hotel dude, you're, with my friends you're drinking walk, you're just walking the whole time sweating sweating stinking outside like every month like, to get a drink you have to wait in a fucking line it's horrible and every motherfucker's on these carts for some reason everyone's on the cart but i did hear that like there's Fremont Fremont Street. I didn't get to go to that, but I heard that's where the actual fun is at. So maybe next time, if I do go, I know that I doubt apparently I'm go. old like, like the old district in Vegas, like old downtown in Vegas, is really nice. It's that's more, Fremont. Yeah, it's more like it's an artsy area. Right? Yeah, yeah. I heard, I heard that it's really dope. We didn't get to go to that, but I walked the strip and I hated it. Never buy weed on the strip. We do not smoke marijuana, but never buy weed on the strip. The worst mistake in your fucking life. Why would you do that? So I got there, right, and I'm like, it's gonna be a good idea. We have a great time, you know? And I'm like, I don't want you know, it's traffic. It's like five o'clock in the afternoon. I don't want to drive anywhere. I wouldn't buy anything from anybody on the strip. Yeah, it's Everybody a bad seems sketchy. So I bought it. <laughs> you know, I'm just spent on a joint. We don't smoke weed. We <laughs> just spent on a joint. I'm going to guess and say $20. Exactly. I spent 25 on the joint and a lighter because I didn't have a lighter at the time. Horrible choice. And I was like, all right, I'm going to light this up, lit it up, and... You know when you get it to going, you know, and it just, everything just fell out. It wasn't tight? Or was it wasn't it, tight. It wasn't everything tight. just fell out at the other end on the floor. And I'm sitting there like looking at it sad, actually picking it up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh well, she had to scrape it up, you know, like sitting there on the floor. This guy like a fiend picking up <laughs> kind of weed off the floor. And people were just staring at you, I'm like, come on, come on. And I just gave up, I threw it on the floor, I'm like, fuck. So I sat there, I hit the pen, I, hit, I had a pen on me, I hit a pen. 
just walked, got a drink. And then the big ass fat Tuesday drinks, yeah, they're tasty. They don't get you drunk, they just get you full. That's you the thing get, though. They so, get you full. You get a double shot of that thing and you don't get anything because you're just drinking at the point just slushy. Do joints or do pens hit you harder? I, I haven't smoked in a, in a long time, but before I stopped smoking, I used to smoke pens and I haven't smoked a joint since I was so, in middle school. Pens hit you harder because it's, wa it's straight wax, so that shit will hit you a lot harder. But joints, it depends on the joint you're smoking. If you smoke at a wax joint, all bets are off the window. Excuse me. Nice. So let's um, finish this beer because we, you, I've been drinking less than you, like more chugs, and you're not even. Like, uh, you're about, we're about the same, honestly. You're about, we're about the same. So as soon as we're about the same, let's uh, let's drink a good amount because we really need to get through this and uh, get through. <laughs> I know you're full because you ate a shit ton of burgers. Bro, I cannot was... breathe right now. I'm like Why? struggling right now. Yeah, you're a little bloated there. A little, a little, a little thick. I'm gonna go home and like shit all this out. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be drunk before you leave, hopefully. Yep. Everybody it's not beer. bad. It's really not bad. It's just bland. Like, I think for me, it's just like because I know it's beer, it grosses me out. I don't think it was beer. So when I when I first started drinking ever, I just thought everything was water. And that's how I well, I used talk. to I used to like beer, but I hate beer now. I don't know why. Just my taste buds change or something. So you're telling me you don't like beer? I hate beer. I don't drink beer at all. But I used to like it, so it doesn't make any sense. It's a sad day when someone says that in this household. Just just a beer drinking household. Don't just you see the sign in the background? There's no sign back there. <laughs> I'm full too, though. I'm so I would be so bloated out of this. I'm literally sitting straight because I can't I can't even slouch anymore. I feel like my stomach's gonna blow up. It's gonna pop. Oh lord. Just burp it out, man. Burp it out. I can't even burp. It's just like I just feel air in my stomach. <laughs> burp it out, man. Burp it out. Can you make yourself burp? You're the robber, you burp? No, I just can't. You can't do it? I just can't. I just feel bloated. I just feel make, like you full. can't make the bubble pop up in the back of your throat. Why can you? Is that a thing? Yeah, yeah. Is it a thing? What yeah, the yeah, fuck? you can burp on command. Yeah, you can't do that? No. Really? <clears throat> so, so there you go. I, well, that, that like forced its way up. Like, it just... <clears throat> you work on command. It's not hard. <laughs> yes, it is. You make a bubble in your throat. <clears> throat> Wait. <clears> throat> <clears> throat> <clears> throat> what the fuck? Yeah, you can burp on command. What you mean? Like, that's a thing. Like... You know people with like, guys got that like, on camera, right? Where they talk and they burp, like they can like talk, like burp really loud and they talk. Is there burping a command? Like the ABCs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People like do shit like that. I knew a guy that could sing like that. It was weird. Super fucking weird. Oh, I gotta finish. <sighs> we are done. <laughs> All right, so let's actually try this beer. Wait, wait, I don't know what the beer is. Oh, it smells. Of course. Um, this smells really stinky. I'm not looking forward to this beer, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> this is, does not smell good at all. So, um, we're gonna try this. <laughs> he doesn't like it already. I don't. I don't think anything of it. Let me see. Hold up. I'll tell you what. It's, I'll tell you what I think is it's gonna be. Honestly, it just tastes like really fucking gross. Like I don't even know what to call it. But I'm not looking forward to it. It's definitely like a ale or a lager. It's, like I don't taste any. Like I don't. The color is definitely. The I spilled it already. God damn it. It smells like yeah, shit. Already, yeah, it's a foul. <laughs> I'm I'm have a foul it's marker it's... that has just a foul marker. It's just like foul one when I spill beer because I'm always spilling beer on me. Your whiteboard put it right there. I know, just a whiteboard just mark it every time. Every time you spill All beer. Right, so you ready? Cheers. Fuck, I'm not looking forward to it. It's really fucking sweet. What? It's not that bad. It doesn't taste like what it smells like. It's, it's really good. It's a cider. It's really good. It's, it's not. I don't know if it's a cider, but it's really good. It's a cider. It tastes like juice. I'm calling it like. Kind of like Hawaiian punch, but in a good way. It literally smells like shit, but it tastes like juice. It's really good. What in the fuck? <laughs> Holy shit. This is really good. Like, I'm enjoying this. Like, it's man. good when I drink it, but when I bring it up to my nose, I smell it and it grosses me out. But when I drink it's it, it's like- Well, I can't smell right now. I'm just like, the smelling's out. It's kind of like catching me off guard every single time I It's, it's pretty good, man. It's pretty good. Like, I, I enjoy this. Yeah, I'm gonna guess pineapple or like- But I'm definitely gonna buy- I feel like I've been right for the last two beers. You got the raspberry one right. You didn't get the first one right. We didn't know what the fuck that was. 
But did I not? Did we not you guess? You didn't guess the one. You didn't guess that one. You guessed the second one. You're like, oh, it's like raspberry. It was like raspberry lemon and anything. I don't know. We, I'm six, guessing six, this one's it's, pineapple. It's, the whole thing is three random beers. What was the first beer the again? I'm drinking. It was Strawberry Days. Strawberry Days. Okay. Don't remember the company that made it, but it was pretty good. Osho? Or was that the second one? No, that was the second one. That was the one I said OSHA. Like the fucking the people that, you know, audit you for not being your company. So, you worked a lot of weird jobs, like I said. Your C company. We're going to aerospace. How are you liking the aerospace right now? Because it's fucking boring. <laughs> because you're a person of creative passion. You know, you're a streamer, like I said. Catch so, here's here. my thing. like, And you're a photographer. Yeah. So... Working at a stagnant job where you know you're not really doing anything in your field, I know that can feel real draining. Yeah. Especially when regards to something that's you, you're not doing something you want to do. You know, you're just working this job because you need a fucking paycheck. So here's my thing. So like, um, I feel like my mind is like constantly racing, but like not in a good way. I can't control it. So like, so what are you doing? Are you they're just anxious there? I have a thing. I I don't know what it is. Um, I've had this conversation with my mom. So I tell her that I think I have like ADHD because I know I know for a fact I have anxiety because I've had like anxiety panic attacks. But I can never stay still. Like I'm literally like my leg is always shaking. I talk really fast. I'm always like jittery, like constant, like no matter what time it is. Like my George knows I, I can't sleep. Like I'm always like I, I get like a minimum of like five, six hours of sleep some nights or most of the nights. But this job requires me to like be in one station for eight hours a day. And so what are you doing exactly? Like what, what I, test, I test, I test the, what do they call jet fuel valves? But it's repetitive. Like I sit at a station, I stick it in a little machine and it shoots carbonator fluid through it to like test the, the PSI, the pressure of the fluid. And then I ride it on hipper and that's it, moving on. But and how many of those do you do a day roughly? That's the thing. I'm, like I said, my mind's racing. So I like, I like to do things fast. Like I'm, I, I catch on to things really quick and I like, I do things like so fast naturally. I run, I run out of work and I sit there, but I have to look busy. So I pretend to read like some like rules and regulations type packet. But time goes by so slow because like I'm there sitting and my mind's like racing 100 miles per hour. And I'm just like, they're like freaking out. So what out. keeps your mind from racing? What is there something you do that like stops you from like having that feeling of like anxiety, like anxiety slash like just all these thoughts running through your head. Um, Cause I remember working in, like I said, warehouse and I was just like sitting there and I felt like an ant. And you feel like an ant. Like you feel like a worker ant. You're there, and everything. Just I get, I get like super depressed. And you're just like, I don't want to do this. I'm just doing this, and you're just like, and time goes by so slow. And you're just waiting for your next break or that shift to be over. And you're yeah. just like, it's almost over. I'm almost out of here. I gotta go. And like, and you know, and you're taking like hour and forty three minutes. <laughs> like, and that's go. that's what goes to my mind. Like when I'm when I'm working, and I get like that. You know, when you get like really down, and you're like, like I hate my life. It's so depressing. I'm like, everyone goes through this. Everyone's going through this right now. I'm, this. I'm, not, I'm not the only one. So that's what your thought is. Like, I'm not the only one that's dealing with this situation at the moment. At the moment, I try to think of that. So exactly. what's something that doesn't get you like that? What's like, is it the creative passion you have of like your arts that like kind of um, make you feel like, like, what do you want to do in life? Like, what's I, your goal? That's the thing I honestly don't know. And that's why I, I like try to like dabble in everything because I feel like no one really knows what they want to do in life until you like, it hits you. I guess like no one really knows until you know, which I guess doesn't really make sense. I guess. No, you're like, right. You're right. Like it's stupid. Like After I high feel like school, you have to people, like people. People know they they think they know what they want to do, but no one really knows until you like legit love it. Until like, that like spark happens. Yeah. Until you know, like you wake up, and you're like, I want to do this. I want to do this. Like you want to do it. It's like the idea of like when you're in high school, like at the age of like you know 17, 18. Like, all right, after this, you got to decide what you want to do for the rest of your life. And that's why, that's why I'm like, at college, it, right? People, yeah, they, they, they force you to like pick a career right away. And you pick this career and you end up not loving it, you know, like and it's a shitty thing. So, oh, it says, and I'm know, not saying it's bad because some people actually do know what they want to do. Yeah, you know, not everyone's, you everyone's, everyone's, everyone's not the same. And they have this spark that hits them. And they're like, hits them when they're young. I'm going to be a fucking firefighter. I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to go and be, you know, I'm going to be a dentist, you know? People do and that's what, that's why I feel like. I'm kind of like stuck because I, I I'm like I envy those people. Like I, I wish I knew what I wanted. Yeah, you I wish I knew what I wanted to do already in life. Your like, passion and and that's why I do photography and streaming and in a uh, so video. is photography because photography your passion. Mm, no, I'll tell you that right now. So, so you, you, you it's you, fun. I love it. You enjoy doing it. I enjoy doing it, but I don't wake up every day and be like I can't wait to play games or I can't wait to go shoot photography. 
but you obviously know I don't post a lot like on Instagram like I don't post like I used to like when I first started photography I thought it was my passion but then when I started shooting a lot more and it started getting to like the business side of it like when you had to like charge people and like people were like oh they would message me like oh what are your rates I was like I don't like this like this is kind of depressing like thinking about like money to do what I like to do like for fun because Juan knows and like Kevin like my friends know like when I first started doing photography I did it because um so here's my thing I have really bad memory like really bad memory like yeah. I, I forget easy and it, it that's like one of my biggest fears is that I'm gonna have Alzheimer's when I'm old so when I first started doing photography it was because I wanted to capture moments with my friends so I would literally take pictures of my phone because I wanted to uh, capture those moments. So when I'm old and I, I thought, I maybe I am gonna get Alzheimer's. I, really, I, I honestly do have really bad memory. I was like, maybe I'll, uh, I'll, I'll look back at the pictures and I remember those times, you know? So that's why I started doing photography. So your whole goal was like- To capture memories. Yeah, you they, to capture just capture memories. moments in life and, and then I started back at them later and like remember like- Exactly, like my youth, story my stories, ex exactly. But then I started liking the art side of it. But yeah. then it started getting to like business, business side of it. Like, you yeah, know, course, like, yeah. I hated that. Like, I hated like the, uh, I went on you tour. You the whole side of being a creative that you gotta sit there and, you know, charge people for the It felt like worse. Yeah. It, like, and it's funny because I didn't even like, it didn't even get that deep to the point where I was getting like constant work. Like I literally got work like once every like three months, you know, but like, even it's then I the hated it. the fact that you have to like schedule it and then yeah, the like, of, like it's all just, right, you gotta pay this much and then set the price with the person and like make sure everything is society good. things bro society things like yeah know, i feel you on that one. sometimes I just being, hate it, bro. sometimes being like on that side um and like trying to figure out a price range and trying to figure out like is my work good enough or am i charging enough and then having to deal exactly. with that and that's what i didn't know what to charge fact of like hey I, I gotta get paid for this and like because obviously you're doing something that takes time it takes money it's you know it's a lot of things that go into it. anything that's regarding photos and video and not it, even it's that. so much time and money that you got to put there's in, not just your equipment the editing process as well that takes so much time and the fact that you're i need to charge for this and then but it's coming up with that and it obviously you want to do it because like you know it's you it's your passion but then it's the fact that it's becoming so much businessy that it's just like, like you said it's like but that's, that's the thing happening. i didn't in america that you're just like like all right it's it's, it's it's now it's like it's its own thing and now like i'm doing it for a living am i gonna enjoy this like it's not even that it's like it's like i didn't even want to charge it felt like i didn't i felt guilty charge people just because like it's like something i enjoy like photography and like i feel like charging people was like mm, kind of feels like i feel like it's kind of like i'm using photography in a way yeah i can't really explain it and then i'll, I'll not on top of like maybe it's every artist sorry i'm burping you good <laughs> Maybe it's like an artist thing, or I don't know what it is, but I get really self-conscious with my work, and I feel like it's not worth what it is. No, I get what you mean, because like you look at it and you're like, "Am I good enough to charge this much?" Exactly. But typically, you are. Typically, you are. Like people. Like are, I feel like my work is never good enough. Like, like every time I take you, a picture, I'm like, if you charge like mm. an, even though like bare minimum for the photo shoot or video shoot, you know, typically you're you know it's good enough to charge that much. You know, if it isn't, then you realize your mistake and you learn from it. That's the whole point. Especially as a starting like photographer, or videographer, or whatever. But it feel like I feel like, and then like in society, like I said, it feels like you're forced to charge, right? Like, because you because yeah. you know you want to make a you want to make a living out of it, so yeah. you're like forced to charge it, but you don't really want to. Well, that's how I am. Like I like mm, you wanted. You I had so much fun it, shooting this. I don't want to do charge it as for a it. Passion more than as a passion project more than a. An yeah, but you also need to make money, like because yeah, you know cause obviously you, yeah, you need it, it sucks. Like you just like mm. yeah, it's that kind of like it's a, it's a hard place and a rock kind of situation where you, you're doing this as a passion thing, but then. You gotta do this as your as a career thing because you know that's that's what it is. Yeah, you gotta think about it in a way and like force. So yourself. you don't know what you want to do, and that's okay. That really is okay. Most of us in this age don't know what we want to do. Right now, we're doing this video shoot because you know we're trying <laughs> all these experiments to you know see what we want to do in life. And, and I feel like that's what life is like. You're just experimenting. Like honestly, like I, that's why I kind of like. I get anxiety because I'm just like fuck. Like I don't know what I'm gonna do with my life. But then I'm like, you gotta try new things. You gotta just try everything. Like I feel like yeah, people, so people, people don't try of, things. Is that why you can dive into like streaming because you're like, I want to try something else as well. Yeah, because growing up, you know, obviously we grew up in that generation where we watched gamers. Like we watched, well, like I grew up around like the Call of Duty era when they were like trick shotting. And like, I was like, damn, I want to do that so bad. So then you got into, because obviously right- And I couldn't afford that when I was, you know, young. Right now we're in the era where <laughs> like, 
Anyone can stream. Like anybody, anybody can do anything, can bro. Do, we have the internet. Internet. The internet. The internet. Everywhere. You have the possibility to stream, vlog, fucking be an influencer. Which I don't understand, by the way. I do never understand influencers. Honestly, here's my here's my take on that. So like, I feel like, like video game wise, I'll just say that because that's the only thing I have like I guess experience in. I guess. Yeah. I suck at video games. But for me, I feel like personality is everything. Personality is everything. If you're not, you can literally you're not, suck at video games and still make it big. If you, if if you're you have personality, not a great person on anything, or not even just like not genuine, genuine or funny or anything, like you're not gonna fucking make it. And that's the thing. Like, if I feel like you gotta be yourself, but you gotta be able because, to like, like my personality isn't good, then that's it. That's it. But you know, if it does make it because people like who I am or what the content is, that's what makes it the actual thing. Content is one thing, but then. The person who's delivering that content is another. But then there's people, of course, that just kind of do things for just for clout, you know, people that just do like stupid shit. I feel like they make it, people that make it big because of that, like they go based off the of clout, they make it big in that moment, but then they die out eventually. Yeah, of course, yeah, because people, they're like, like fucking people, like they'll do things for either shock value, like things like that, or they'll do things that are trendy and then they die out because that's the thing. It's just trendy at the moment. It's not gonna live forever. It's one thing to go viral, but it's another thing to make it, like, keep going. The most influential people that you know that are trendy, or the most influential people that are content creators, are the people that keep it fresh, that are in genuine, like they're great people, or they're like their their idea in like their their general idea of that whatever they're making is a good platform. But if they're just going things based off clout or based off this is a trendy idea, I'm gonna go for this, or the whole idea of good any publicity is good publicity which in in retrospect is a good idea but the fact that people like really live on that is just like to me bizarre like to have things like a negative like perspective of yourself like the whole logan paul jake paul bullshit with boxing and the whole like beef with people i i i low-key well not low-key but i i don't like jake paul i like i like logan paul but i don't like jake paul I do have respect for them both. Though, I don't because really, they they did take they do take boxing serious. So. I don't really care about them. Like I just think like I used to hate Logan Paul, I but I, listened, I started listening to his podcast. His podcast is really good. I don't I don't care about them. Like I can't I don't really get into them. But Logan or Jake Paul from from what I've heard and seen I, I don't like. I'm them. not a fan of them. Not, I can't get into them. And like you know some people that may be some people cup of tea, but you know that is what they got to do. But I hate their whole ideal of like. You know, if they're even like doing something remotely shitty and they're getting publicity about it, that's their, you know, they still got that standing platform. And it's just Well, like, they're consistent. Yeah, that's the thing. It's consistency. Consistency and personality, bro. It really that's is. That's all you it need, bro. It really is. You have to make it life. And hopefully we make it life with these consistent videos. But yeah, <laughs> it's hard, bro. Honestly, it is hard. Like, dude, being a It sounds simple, but it's hard. Content creative is so fucking hard. It is such a hard thing Especially to do. if you're like up and coming because you have to work a nine to five or like you know full time hey, job. I'm working a job. I'm working like you know ten. And that's what I'm saying. You have to have a passion. On the side, you know, on your days off, where you can be doing something else. We right now, you know, what we can be doing sitting at home, chilling, relaxing, hanging out with our dogs. But you know, what we're doing filming content for you, <laughs> for you people that will eventually watch this, and I hope you watch this because you know we want to be even if they don't watch it now though, it could blow up. It could blow up later. Exactly. We want to be able to. You know, provide, you know, some kind of entertainment for people, you know, make them laugh throughout there. That's the whole point of content, you know, make them laugh, make them feel something, you know, anything in that regards is usually content is some way to change your feeling. I'm extremely drunk. <laughs> so let's finish our beers real quick. We got, we both got about the same left, actually. It was a really good beer. Just stay. It's a pretty it's good stink. beer. Let's finish it real quick. Let's finish it. What do better. you predict it is? It is. It's definitely an ale or a lager. It's I'm predicting different. it's a cider pineapple. pineapple I don't think it's pineapple it, cider. I don't know. Let's finish it together, though. Let's do this. Let's finish this off real quick, and we're done. All right. Oh. <laughs> All right. What is the beer? Bring out the beer. This is the beer. Tangerine? It is grapefruit. a lager. <laughs> grapefruit and a hint of blood orange. That's a tangerine. <laughs> You're way off, man. Tangerine. It is, Aren't rad tangerines it is Rattler Brewery. No, tangerines are orange, huh? It is two pitches rattling and refreshing crisp Bavarian style blend of lager and grapefruit juice with a hint of blood orange and a good measure. It's two pitches brewery company. Um, this was really good. It stinks it's though. No funny it stinks. It, it kind of does It smell, tastes good, but it stinks. But holy shit, this is a really good beer. This beer, not sponsored once a win. 
If we're not sponsored by this beer, we're not, yeah. sponsored, by Rad we're not sponsored yet. They're not paying me to say this. This is a good beer. If you guys want to ever try this, it's Radner, a uh, Radler, um, two pitchers brewery company. Um, give it a try. It is a great beer. I do recommend this beer, especially for people that are just getting into beer or um, have a kind of a don't like the bitterness of beer, which is a possibility. But all right, so this kind of wraps up our um, interview with two with. I don't even know the name. That's how drunk I am. <laughs> beers, beers, and beers. And beers. This is wraps up the interview. I'm with 98 Views. Edwin, um, it was great having you on the show. Um, I enjoyed hopefully it. It was fun. Love this show. If you love Edwin, please follow him at 98 Views on Instagram, um, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok. Sarah, TikTok. Follow him anything. If you want to throw your eyes at them, throw them at this camera right now. If you have anything to say uh, for the audience, follow my YouTube. I will be posting a lot more on YouTube again, hopefully soon. I do post my video game clips on TikTok. Hopefully I'll post some Kitchen 98 on there, vlogging on TikTok as well pretty soon. Instagram, I wanna get back into photography and videography again, hopefully soon, cause COVID's over now. So I wanna you know, start grinding again, obviously. Get back into it, cause my life has been fucking blank for the past few months cause of, or years cause of COVID, but I'll be back, I'm coming back, I'm ready. So thank you for watching us once again. I'm your host Sandia, if you guys have any suggestions on our videos, please send a comment below. Um, we want to obviously improve our show as we go, especially as me as an interviewer, as us as a production company. Um, but once again, thank you for coming to the show, and we'll see you again. Thanks. Cut the cameras. Fuck yeah, bro. <laughs>